Peace be with you. This is Ben Thompson with the Free Citizens of America. Today we are studying the book of the prophet Jeremiah. And it is a very important book for our day. The reason it is so important is because it talks about a, a society that is about to be destroyed because of their wickedness. And we are in that same position. We are about to have a desolation event come upon this nation. And so the prophet Jeremiah will certainly help us to, to return to the Lord if we are going to return. And we are in Jeremiah chapter 4. And of course we are using the King James Version. If thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me. And if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, then shalt thou not remove. And thou shalt swear, the Lord liveth in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness. And the nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and sow not among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord, and take away the foreskins of your heart, ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn, that none can quench it, because of the evil of your doings. So let's pause right there. The Lord is saying that if you return to him, and if you will put away the things that are abominations before the Lord, then the Lord will not remove you out of out of your place. And you have to acknowledge the Lord in all things, that he lives, and that in him is truth and judgment and righteousness. The Lord says, Break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. The fallow ground is referring to a land that has not been planted, it hasn't been plowed up, and so it would only, if you throw seeds on it, it would only produce shallow seeds, shallow roots, which means that they're only, they're, they don't have a real conversion to the Lord. And when the, the Lord uses this as a parable, in referring to those who hear the gospel. And these are they who are who only will believe in the Lord during happy times and good times, but when affliction comes, then they reject the Lord. Now right now we are technically living in a good time. Whether you no matter how you push it we're not running from house to house. We're not in the streets warring with each other yet. But we are in good times. Now, take away all those good times. What kind of a person will you be? Will you still strive to follow the Lord? Or will you see all this and say, hey, there's no God. He wouldn't allow this. So... The Lord wants to break up that hard, unplanted ground and make it so that seeds root can take place. And then he says, so not among thorns. The thorns represent the cares of the world. Our, all our problems with money and all the things we like to cling on to, that chokes up the word of the Lord, the gospel. And so we need, there's, there's two things we need to do. We need to gain real testimonies, a real witness that these things are true. Otherwise, when hardship comes, we will reject the Lord. And we need to 
uh, take the, have the faith to cast off worldly things so that it does not choke up and destroy the word that is within us. It says, circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart. This, of course, is talking about the hard-heartedness When we become so hard-hearted that we're set in our ways, we won't, we're not willing to be taught. That is considered an uncircumcised heart. But when we are, when we will humble ourselves and be teachable, teachable before the Lord, then we circumcise our heart. Now, if destruction comes, it is because of the evil of our doings. Declare ye in Judah, and publish in Jerusalem, and say, Blow ye the trumpet in the land. Cry, gather together, and say, Assemble yourselves, and let us go up into the defense cities. Set up the standard toward Zion. Retire, stay not, for I will bring evil from the north, and a great destruction. The lion is come up from his thicket, and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He has gone forth from his place to make thy land desolate, and thy cities shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. For this gird you with sackcloth, lament and howl, for the fierce anger of the Lord is not turned back from us. Now it comes through, there comes a point when we, we are so deep into a wicked society that there's no way out. And I believe that moment for the United States was the 70s. That was the last chance that the United States had. Now we are in this so deep that that our the desolation event cannot be turned away. But that should not let us stop doing the good things. We need to still keep trying because those who are doing closer, who are on the, the path closer to God, those will be the ones who will survive through the desolation event. Now it shall come to pass at that day, saith the Lord, that the heart of the king shall perish, and the heart of the princes and the priests shall be astonished, and the prophets shall wonder. Then said I, Ah, oh, Lord God, surely thou hast greatly deceived this people, and Jerusalem, saying, ye shall have peace, whereas the sword reacheth unto the soul. At that time shall it be said to this people and to Jerusalem, A dry wind of the high places in the wilderness toward the daughter of my people, not to fan nor to cleanse, even a full wind from those places shall come unto me. Now also will I give sentence against them. Behold, he shall come up as clouds, and his chariots shall be as a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe unto us, for we are spoiled. O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? For a voice declareth from Dan, and publisheth affliction from Mount Ephraim. Make ye mention of the nations. <coughs> Behold, publish against Jerusalem. The watchers come from afar, country, and give out their voice against the cities of Judah. As keepers of a field are they against her round about, because she hath been rebellious against me, saith the Lord. Thy way and thy doings have procured these things unto thee. This is thy wickedness, because it is bitter, because it reacheth unto thine heart. My bowels, my bowels, I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace, because thou hast heard O my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Destruction upon destruction is cried, for the whole land is spoiled. Suddenly are my tents spoiled, and my curtains in a moment. How long shall I see the standard, and hear the sound of the trumpet? For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sodest children, and they have none understanding. 
They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. So let's pause there. How true is this? We are a foolish people, and then we do not have understanding. Now we are quick, and we are wise on how to do evil things, but on how to follow the good way, we don't know. And the thing is, the good way is taught in the Torah. Everything is in the Torah. Everything we need to live a proper life is in the Torah. How God wants us to live our life, that's in the Torah. Now, our society has completely turned away from that. Even if something sounds good, it's not good. It's cor a corrupted form. All we do in our society now is study evil, both because of our, our lustful desires, because of our ignorance, and because of the traditions of our ancestors. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord, and by his fierce anger. For thus hath the Lord said, The whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end? For this shall the earth mourn, and the heavens above be black, because I have spoken it. I have proposed it, and will not repent, neither will I turn back from it. The whole city shall flee for the noise of the horsemen and bowmen. They shall go into thickets and climb up upon the rocks. Every city shall be forsaken, and not a man dwell therein. And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Though thou closest thyself with crimson, Though thou deckest thyself with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy face with painting, in vain shalt thou make thyself fair. Thy lovers will despise thee, they will seek thy life. So now, this is, of course, what's going to happen to Jerusalem. But I assure you, a similar event will take place in the United States. We could read this, it says, Though you clothe yourself with fine clothing, and you deck yourselves with gold jewelry, though you paint your face with makeup, all this is in vain. That is basically what it's saying. And it's the same thing that happened to us when the, the Russian, Chinese, and Alliance of Nations attack us. They will send their soldiers and they will spoil as much as they can. And all of our fine clothing, our jewelry, our makeup will mean nothing during that time. For I have heard a voice as of a woman in travail and the anguish as of her that bringeth forth her first child, the voice of the daughter of Zion that bewaileth herself that spreadeth her hand, saying, Woe is me now, for my soul is wearied because of murderers. Now let's move on into chapter 5. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now and know, and seek in the broad places thereof. If ye can find a man, that there be any that executeth the judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. And though they say, The Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. So, this is perfect f for our day. How many people cry that they love the Lord and that they follow Him, but you know they don't because they're not following His Word. They're not keeping His Torah. They, don't, they say, I don't need to keep the Torah because Jesus did away with the law. Jesus didn't do away with the law. He fulfilled it and brought it to a higher plane, meaning that the the Torah, as Moses gave it, is the minimum, and that Christ wants you to take that law and bring it up to a higher plane. 
meaning not only shall you not murder, but you shall also not even be angry. It does not do away with the law. It takes that law, accepts it, and then adds to it a higher meaning and a higher level. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. So again, this is where we're at again. The Lord looks at us and he sees that we are not returning to his path. His path. The Lord has stricken us here a little bit. He, he sends prophets to us to preach to us. He sends mighty storms. He sends wars. All of, all of these point to the fact that we ourselves have fallen from his path. And we, re we refuse to receive correction. And now our faces are harder than a rock. Meaning basically that no matter what, we will not turn back to the path of the Lord. Therefore, I said, surely these are poor, they are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. I will get me unto the great men, and will speak unto them, for they have known the way of the Lord, and the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. Wherefore, a lion out of the forest shall slay them, and a wolf of the evenings shall spoil them. A leopard shall watch over their cities. Every one that goeth out thence shall be torn in pieces, because their transgressions are many, and their backslidings are increased. How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me, and sworn by them that are no gods. When I had fed them to the full, they then committed adultery and assembled themselves by troops in the harlots' houses. They were as fed horses in the morning, every one neighed after his neighbor's wife. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord, and shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? So here we have a couple ideas again of what the Lord is angry at and we hinted at this earlier now he's being more open the first is that they turned to, f to false gods now we can say we don't turn to false gods we believe in the Lord but see here the they also believed in the Lord, but they also believed in their other gods, too. There's only supposed to be one God, and in our modern time, money has become our God, and it is a false God, and it is an idol, a worthless thing. And that is our idolatry in this day. And they commit... They committed adultery. Do we not also commit adultery? They assembled themselves by troops in the harlots' houses. Is there not rampant fornication in our society? Go ye up upon her walls and destroy, but make not a full end. Take away your battlements, for they are not the Lord's. For the house of Israel and the house of Judah have dwelt very treacherously against me, saith the Lord. They have belied the Lord and said, It is not he, neither shall evil come upon us, neither shall we see sword nor famine. And the prophets shall become wind, and the word is not in them. Thus shall it be done unto them. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord, God of hosts, because ye speak this word, Behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them. 
Lo, I will bring a nation upon you from far, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. It is a mighty nation. It is an ancient nation, a nation whose language thou knowest not, neither understandest what they say. Their quiver is as an open sepulchre. They are all mighty men. They shall eat up thine harvest and thy bread, which thy sons and thy daughters should eat. They shall eat up thy flocks and thine herds. They shall eat up thy vines and thy fig trees. They shall impoverish thy fenced cities, wherein thou trustest with the sword. Nevertheless, in those days, saith the Lord, I will not make a full end with you. And it shall come to pass, when ye shall say, Wherefore doeth the Lord our God all these things unto us? Then shalt thou answer them, Like as ye have forsaken me, and served strange gods in your land, so shall ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours. Declare this in the house of Jacob, and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord, will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree, that it cannot pass it? And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail, though they roar, it can they not pass over it? But this people hath a revolting and rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God, that giveth rain, both the former and the latter in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait, as he that set his snares. They set a trap. They catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they are become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat. They shine, yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper, and the right of the needy do they not judge. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? So, here we have another idea. It says, For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait. As he that set his snares, they set a trap, they catch men. Could this be talking about a form of lawsuit? Is it talking about slavery? Is it talking about deceiving people into buying goods that they don't need? I honestly can't say that answer. I think all three are equal. And the, and they become rich because of it. So looking at the other other part sounds like they have developed a form of slave labor. Now compare our day. We have these huge multinational corporations and they are t doing whatever they can to take up all the wealth they can. And they've become fat because of it. Fat in finances. In our court system, those who are truly guilty, such as these criminals in the among the international banking cartel, in Congress, in the White House, their deeds are waved over, not punished. And those who ought to be judged and cared for are ignored because of them. And just like the Lord did not pass over his own people, he will not pass over us. 
because of this. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? Now that is the end of that chapter. Let's move on to chapter 6. O ye children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem, and blow the trumpet in Tekoa, and set up a sign of fire in beth Hacharon, for evil appeareth out of the north, and a great destruction. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. The shepherds with their flocks shall come unto her. They shall pitch their tents against her round about. They shall feed every one in his place. Prepare ye war against her. Arise, and let us go up at noon. Woe unto us, for the day goeth away, for the shadows of the evening are stretched out. Arise, and let us go by night, and let us destroy her palaces. For thus hath the Lord of hosts said, Hew ye down trees, and cast them mount against Jerusalem. This is the city to be visited. She is holy oppression in the midst of her. And a fountain casteth out her waters, so she casteth out her wickedness. Violence and spoil is heard in her. Before me continually is grief and wounds. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, lest my soul depart from thee, lest I make thee desolate, a land not inhabited. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer into the, the baskets. To whom shall I speak, and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Therefore I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad, and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days and their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, every one is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. They have healed also the herd of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the path, in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. So let's pause right there. That is very important. It says, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old pass. Where is the good way, and walk therein. So, here the Lord is telling Jerusalem, and or here Benjamin more specifically, that they need to return to the old path. The old path, as taught in the Torah, now we have the same obligation. We have the old path as well, which we no longer walk in. And if we walk in that path, then we will be able to follow the way of the Lord. The people, it says here, the people said, cry, peace, peace. But they don't have any understanding what peace is, and neither does this world, this time. Peace, when the Lord talks about peace, he's not talking about absence of war, although that has some part of it. Peace is the result when you keep the teachings of the Torah. When you keep the Torah, the result in your society, that is called peace. That's why 
in Hebrew, peace, shalom, means soundness. That everything is right the way it's supposed to be. Also, I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Therefore hear, ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. To what purpose cometh there to me incense from Sheba, and the sweet cane from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet unto me. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. The neighbor and his friend shall perish. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a people cometh from the north country, and a great nation shall be raised from the sides of the earth. They shall lay hold on bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roareth like the sea. And they ride upon horses set in array as men for war against thee, O daughter of Zion. We have heard the fame thereof. Our hands wax feeble. Anguish hath taken hold of us in pain, as of a woman in her travail. Go not forth into the field, nor walk by the way, for the sword of the enemy and fear is on every side. O daughter of my people, gird thee with sackcloth, and wallow thyself in ashes. Make thee mourning as for an only son, most bitter lamentation, for the spoiler shall suddenly come upon us. I have set thee for a tower and a fortress among my people, that thou mayest know and try their ways. They are all grievous revolters, walking with slanderers. They are brass and iron, they are all corruptors. The bellows are burned, the lead is consumed of the fire, the founder melteth in vain, the wicked are not plucked away. Reprobate silver shall men call them, because the Lord hath rejected them. And that is the end of chapter 6, and we will stop there for now. And I hope that you can truly see how important this book is for our day. It is... It is Jeremiah talking to an ancient society with the same problems we are facing. And we can learn from their mistakes. That's why it's there. So we don't have to do this new time and time again. We can always look back. We can find the old path and rewalk it. We do not have to create new paths. We're always talking about the need to create new paths. But that's a false concept. The Lord wants us to walk in His path. His path is the old way. And until we do that, we will be forced to go through the desolation. Now, I urge you to study the Torah. And you will... And live by its teachings, learn its teachings. It is, if you will deeply study it, you will see that it does talk about all things to help you out. I also, I study the Torah once a week on Sunday, and I post that discussion every week. And if you study that with me, then you too can see how the Torah really does teach everything we need. I leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.